This morning, if you've got your Bibles and you want to turn with us, we're going to turn to James chapter 4, and we're going to look at verses 7 and 8 there. Uh, I know that a couple weeks ago, I used this same portion of Scripture here for uh, my message then, and uh, but there's, I, I guess this morning what I would like to say is, you know, uh, how many know that it's so important to pray during a time like this? Amen? How many know that there's three things that we really need to be doing when it comes to really seeking God? Amen? How many know it's, it's a time to seek the Lord, right? Amen? What does it tell us in Matthew? Seek ye first, what? the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and it says all these things will be added on to you, right? And the verses before, it is saying if you're worried about what clothes you're going to wear and what you're going to eat and all those kind of things, you know, I mean, they're all physical things, right? And when it comes down to it, we're to seek God first. Amen? How, how many know that that word, what that word seek means? I'd just like to share just a little bit concerning that. And then there's a couple of other words that the Lord laid on my heart, especially when I was praying about, uh, you might say, us seeking God, being close to Him. You know, I think it's so important that we have within, I mean, you might say, I don't know for sure what word to use this morning, but how many... Pray every morning. Read your Bible every morning. Amen? How, how, how many have found out that is really important? Right? And you know, when we start drifting away from the Word and drifting away from the, you might say, praying, what happens? We start becoming worldly-minded, don't we? Amen. That starts to go down. And you know, uh, when we our men's deal we went to yesterday, they, they, that was one of the things that they brought out. There was several different things, and I won't go into all the detail on it, but every one of them was things that we needed to do. We needed to keep on doing and not drifting away. And one of the, one of the illustrations that one of the fellows brought, and I don't remember the names of the boxers, but you remember this was way before they used boxing gloves. Anyway, and there was a, a champion guy that was winning and so on. And this guy, this guy, I think his name was Corbett, I think, if I remember right. Anyway, he came up and he, 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 he won the fight in 21 rounds. But then he fought another guy, and that one was 61 rounds. And this was what he said when they asked him, how do you do it? He says, well, he said... I just keep telling myself, one more round, one more round, one more round. <laughs> and you know who? You win. You stay in there. How many of us sometimes need to say, one more day? Amen. One more day. One more day. And you know, the thing is, is we'll never lose out if we don't have that one more day. And sometimes we are. Sometimes we feel tired, sometimes we feel down, or sometimes we do this, and you know, the thing is, is we need to keep that in our heart and in our mind. I'm going to seek God every morning. And you know, what's nice about, or I like about in James here, and we're just going to look at a couple of verses here this morning, but anyway, uh, is when you look at verses 7 and 8, we'll look at them, and then I've got some other places to go. Number one, it says, Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And verse 8 says, Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. You know, we'll just kind of stop with those two verses. But notice what it is. You know, it's telling me to submit to God. Lord, I want to be all yours today. I want to go with you. I want your will. I need your purpose. 
and I need your help. Amen? And you know, we go and we pray. And then as we pray, the Bible says we can come near to God and He will come near to you. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> Hallelujah. How many times have you, have you found that to be? And you know, we come and sometimes we're, we're discouraged and we don't know which way to turn and we don't know just how to pray. But God, I just come to you. I need your help. I need your direction. I need your purpose. Lord, I need you. Amen. And Father, as we go into this this morning, I pray for your anointing of the Holy Spirit. I pray, Lord, that as we look at these verses, that, Lord, that, that you have laid on my heart, that, Lord, I just pray that, Father, it might help each one of us, O oh God. And I thank you, Lord, that as we come together on Sunday morning, Lord, it's so that the whole body will grow. All of us can grow together. All of us, Lord, can seek your will, seek your purpose. And Lord, you can prepare us for every day. Not only Sunday, but every day. And Lord, I just pray that, Father, as we look at your word today, that it will help us, Lord, to stand strong, to stand firm in our faith, and stand, Lord Jesus, in an up-to-date position with you, Lord. Amen. How many know what's an up-to-date position <laughs> with God? Well, what's an up-to-date position with your family? Amen. Right? It is. It's, it's having a relationship with them. It's talking to them. It's, right? And you know, the same thing when we come to church <clears throat> this morning, we can have that relationship with each other. Hebrews seven nineteen is another verse. Do you have that one, Ran? Here it says, For the law made nothing perfect, and a better hope is introduced by which we do what? Draw. We draw from God. Amen? Which we draw from God. You know, that's, that's the second word. You know, the first word that I'm thinking about, and that's what I brought mostly last week, was that word seek. We must seek Him, right? And that's what the Bible tells us, that we must seek Him. And, I, and there's some really, really neat verses that I, I think are, are so good, and I've kind of got them written down here someplace if I can find them real quick. But as we draw near to the Lord, and I, I'm just kind of putting in some of the things that, that we just kind of read, we wash our hands when we draw to Him. We purify our hearts. We humble ourselves before the Lord. And you know when we do that, He will lift us up. Amen. Verse 6 tells us that pride causes God to turn from our prayer and withhold His grace. But for those who humbly submit to God and draw near to Him, He gives abundant grace. And you know, that's the second word. There's three words that the Lord really kind of laid on my heart. Is seek Him. Word number two is draw near to Him. This morning I just shared in Sunday school class where remember Jesus was sitting above the hill and above Jerusalem and said, how oh, 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 often I long for you to come. But you wouldn't come. Amen? You know, um, they were rejecting Him by not coming. And you know the same thing sometimes when we don't come and we don't go pray, and we don't go seek the Lord, we're letting our minds and our hearts and our lives be filled with other things. Amen? You know, I, I, I don't know if it was Joe that brought this last, last week or not, but, you know, there's a lot of people that, they say they're Christians, but, you know, their lives are filled with other things. Right? There's so much out there. 
that we can be doing. And you know, they'll, they'll take away our time with God. You know, there, there's a lot of times people say, well, I was planning to go to church, but I just didn't have time. I was planning to pray, but, you know, I had to do this. Right? You know, we have one thing after another, right? That comes in and takes its place. And that's what I'm, I guess that, that's what the Lord has really kind of laid on my heart is there's some things that I need to have first in my life to draw closer to God. If I'm going to experience Him as my God and my Savior, you know what? I need to get close. Right? I need to get close. I need to be close to Him. But for those who humbly submit to God and draw near to Him, He gives abundant grace and mercy and help in every situation of life. And that's why Matthew 6.33 tells us to seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and these things will be added onto you. Then I'd just like us to go over to Hebrews 4, and we're going to look at verses 14 through 16. I think these are... Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are. And he did not... Oh, sorry. He did not sin... Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Amen. You know, what's so, it's one thing about going to Jesus. He can identify with us. He was here. If we went into the fifth chapter, we would find where it talks about Him crying and praying. You know, see, when... He came down to die for man. He had to come into a man's body. Amen? And you know, how many know that we have to get this thing to submit? <laughs> right? <laughs> this handsome body, i got to get it to submit right now. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> this ugly one, I have to get to submit. Amen? <laughs> How many, how, many, how many find that that's a, that's a battle every day? It's a battle every day. And you know, how many know that Jesus had the battle too? And you know, and the devil seems to know when I'm having a battle. And you know, when Jesus was in that wilderness for 40 days, right? Without eating or drinking or whatever, the devil was right there with him. And what was he doing? He was tempting him. But you know, how did he overcome him? He overcame him through the Word of God. Every place he went, every place, everything he did, he did the Word. Amen? So praise God. Do we need the Word? We do. Amen. We need it. So Christ sympathizes with our weakness. And we can confidently approach, you might say, the heavenly throne, knowing that our prayers are welcomed and desired by our Heavenly Father. And I'd like for us to look at Hebrews chapter 10, and we're just going to look at verses 19 through 22. And did, did we pass out my verses this morning? Okay, great. I just felt like this morning when I was doing it, I was going to be kind of uh, jumping around in the Bible here quite a bit to, to reach all these things that I had kind of had on mind. But in chapter 10, and I'll, I'll just read it in my Bible, and it'll be up there too for you. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, opened, up, opened for us through the curtain, that is his body, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith. You know, notice what it says. Let us draw near. You know... I want to look at my footnotes in my Bible and some things I've put in here. Faith and drawing near to God through Jesus Christ are inseparable. Faith is defined as sincerely coming to God and believing in His goodness. By coming to God through Christ, 
One finds mercy. One finds grace. One finds help. One finds salvation. And you know, and there are some that, I mean, we find sanctification. Now, how many know what sanctification is? Okay, that's leaving the life of sin, right? We are sanctified through Christ Jesus, set apart, right? And cleansing. Clearly, this implies that where there is no drawing near to God in prayer and fellowship with Christ, there is no saving faith. Jesus himself equates faith with earnest prayer. You know, if we are not drawing near, we are not experiencing what we need. Amen? Wow. Wow. Sometimes it feels like it's easier just to kind of drift along. Amen? <laughs> my, my, my old horse, he's getting kind of old. And he, he likes to drift. <laughs> How do I keep him from drifting? I slap him with the rain. I touch him with my spurs. And, you know... How many need God to touch you with His spurs once in a while? Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Lord, that we don't have to drift. Amen. In Luke chapter 18, verses 6 through 8, we have those. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. How, how many know what the verses just before this say? You remember? There was this woman that was having problems and she was going to the judge to help her and he just wanted to push her off and didn't want to do it. But if she kept pestering him and pestering him until finally he decided to do it, right? <laughs> okay. Anyway, and the will of God, and, and will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? How many know this morning that faith is something else that needs to grow? Faith is something else we need to feed. What do we feed it on? The Word, right? It's the Word. When we read the Word in our heart, it's filled with the Word. It gives us faith. Amen? It's, it's finding that Word and what it does. Will He find faith on earth? As we approach, you might say, history's end, the question for each believer is, am I persevering in faith, continuing steadfast in prayer? Am I calling on God that justice may be done and His righteous cause may triumph completely and forever? Am I so preoccupied with this life that I'm not looking forward to Christ's return in His eternal kingdom? You know, I think about this quite often. I think about, you know, it is important how we live on earth, right? You know, we have important things that we need to do. We work for somebody, or maybe we are got our own business, or whatever. We have our family, and... How many know that life can get really busy? Amen? And you know, we, we want to do right. We want to get it done like it should be done and all that kind of stuff. But you know, when you think about it, this world is not our home. Amen. We're just passing through. And you know, when we're on a trip someplace, the only time we ever stop to look at the country is something beautiful, look at it, take a picture of, whatever, do you know, something like that, right? But you know... Where we live, I gotta pull the weeds, I gotta trap the gophers, I gotta do all this kind of stuff, right? <laughs> and so there's a lot to do. But you know, at the same time, I don't want to go to heaven and I haven't prepared for heaven. How do I prepare for heaven? Drawing close to God, amen? You know that doing those things that God has called me to do. You know, our position in heaven is going to be, what? 
It's going to be what our position was here on earth. Are we doing what God has called us to do? You know, so many times it's so easy to get everything more important in this world, in this life, that we're not even ready for heaven. Amen? You know, we need to be a faithful servant to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, this place, I'm just traveling through, man. <laughs> But I've got a, my focus is where I'm going. I want to get to heaven. I want to hear God say, well done. And what's he going to say it to? His faithful servant. So, how do I become his servant? I have to know him. I have to know how he wants it done. I have to know what he is asking me to do. And you know, the hardest thing about that with our relationship with God, how many know that God asks you to do things that you can't do by yourself? Amen. Amen? The only way you can do it is allowing Christ to do it through you. Amen? And you know, I, I, that was hard for, hard for Riddell and I both when the Lord was calling us the pastor. Because I can't do it, Lord. You got the wrong guy. <laughs> I can't do that. But you know, now looking back, one of the things that really kind of hit home with me is, you know, if God called me because I knew how to do it all, I would be doing it to please me. Right? But since I don't know how to do it all, I have to go, Lord, how do I do it? Isn't that right? Amen. You know, we, we do it without His purpose in mind, and in, in our heart. And that's why it's so important that we draw close to Him. You know, we meet together regularly in order to encourage and strengthen each other to hold firmly to Christ. If we don't, we become weaker, not stronger, more susceptible to deception and Satan's schemes. And in Ephesians chapter 6, we won't, our time is kind of getting away from us. But how many know in Ephesians chapter 6 is talking about the whole armor, right? Our whole armor that we need to wear. Hebrews 10.22, which we just read, was let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and a full assurance of faith. And you know, I, I just kind of dropped in, in Rayanne. I'm, I'm just going to kind of push on, maybe Sorry. not use all of them. Is that okay? And then, because I, oh, I want to close with, with the thought that's in my heart, with my whole reason for going into this, if I can, this morning. You know, uh, in Psalm 73, verse 28, it says, But as for me, it's good to be near God. I have made the Sovereign Lord my refuge. John 6, 44 says, The Father draws people to Jesus through the Holy Spirit. God's work of drawing covers all people. As Jesus said, I will draw all men in John 12, 32. But this drawing is not irresistible, for it can be rejected. And that's what I was talking about in Matthew 23. Here Jesus was on a hill looking over Jerusalem and said, how often I wanted to, how often I invited you, how often... We could have coffee together, amen? <laughs> you know, I hope you don't mind me saying those kind of things. But the thing is, is we could have that time with Him. We could get to really know Him. And you know, God could give us so much direction. And you know, I would like to just kind of use in my end part the word devote. You know, in 1 Chronicles 22 and 19, it says, now devote, now devote your heart and soul to seeking the Lord your God. You see how those two go together? Devote your heart and soul to seeking the Lord your God. Colossians 4, 2 says, devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. In Titus 3, 8, and Titus 3.14. Could you do those? Bring those up for me, man. 
Okay. This is a trustworthy saying, and I want you to stress these things so that those who have trusted in God may be careful to devote themselves to doing what is good. These things are excellent and profitable for everyone. Notice that, that they might devote those things. Then the next point, verse 14, our people must learn to, what? Devote themselves to doing what is good in order to provide for urgent needs and not live on productive lives. Whoa. You know, that word seek needs to be in our heart. The word devote needs to be in our heart. How many know that devotion is another word, right? Devotion is when we devote is practiced. Then it becomes a devotion for us. In in Psalm, I mean, in Acts eight, verse chapter eighteen, verse five, it says, Paul devoted himself to preaching the gospel and testifying. Romans 12.10 says, Be devoted to one another. Honor one another. And if you wanted to jot down a verse just to go and look up, Job 11, verses 13 through 20. It's an interesting verse. But it goes on. Verses are different. If you want to write those down. But chapter 6, verse 14 in Job Job says, a despairing man should have the devotion of his friends, even though he forsakes the fear of the Almighty. Did you get that? Yeah. A despairing man should have the devotion of his friends, even though he forsakes the fear of the Almighty. What does that tell us? You know... There's people out here that don't know God. And you know, a lot of times they don't even want us to talk about God. But how many know that we're still to be devoted to Him? Right? We're to continue sharing Christ with them. We are to continue to pray with them. Amen? And you know, I, what I want to do is I want to close with uh, in Acts chapter 2 and we kind of finished with this last time that I brought a similar message <coughs> but I just want to go back and show see the devotion that the church had and beginning with verse 42 they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship. What did they do? They devoted themselves to the Word. How many agree with me that we need to devote ourselves to the Word? Amen. You know, one of the things I'm finding out is I don't remember names very much anymore. And I used to be able to quote a whole lot of scriptures. <laughs> I could think of them and go find them, but I can't quote them like I used to, right? I don't know. I guess I'm getting old, but whatever. But they, you know what? But they devoted themselves to it. Then notice what it says. And to the fellowship, The disciples not only developed a vertical relationship with God, but they also nourished a horizontal, warm, honest, open, healing, redeeming fellowship based on a common life together in Christ. They pursued the fellowship of Christ and the Holy Spirit between and among one another. And, and I share something this morning, and I, I, I pray you don't get me wrong. You know, I praise God for all the ministries that you can reach. Radio, television, all of these things. But you know, and, and I know that they have a purpose out there. But the thing that I see so much of the time is that becomes people's church. Right? They watch it on TV or they hear this. And I'm not saying it's wrong, but the thing is, if you're not part of an active church, you're not part of the body of Christ. Right? And you know, 
when you're just watching it, yeah, you might hear some really good word and so on. But you know what? The important part is being part of the bride of Christ physically and spiritually. Amen? You know, for our church to be able to reach our community, our church must grow together. The community has to see the relationship that we have in our church. Amen? Yeah. And you know, and it's together we reach out. It's together that they see us loving our neighbors, loving each other. Amen? Right? Do you see how important it is? But you know, we find that there's a lot of people who say, oh yeah, we're Christians. We watch such and such every Sunday or we do this. But you know what? They're not in part with what God's work is. Amen? Are, you, are we right? Are you following me? I know there's probably a better way to say those things or whatever, but anyway, I think it's so important. The third thing that I see that they are, it says that everyone was, let's see, if I go back, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship to the breaking of bread and to prayer. And you know what, I think this is one that's so important, is that we come together to pray together. I, I appreciate how that on Sunday mornings, everyone reaches out and we pray together. And I think it's between that and our worship time of singing and so on, is so important. But you know, in the early church, prayer was a high priority. It was an integral part of their life together. In Acts, where there is much prayer, there was much activity of the Holy Spirit. And you know, this is something that we need to do. You know, sometimes I feel like um, it's important that maybe there are some times during the week that you just like to come down here to the church and pray. Well, I can pray at home. Yeah, I can too. But sometimes we need to come here to do it. Why? I have to get used to knowing this is God's house. Amen? Yes, my house at home is God's house. But the thing is, is God's house here is His house. Amen? Right? There's times when, when, I, when I come down here and I'll be praying at this altar, or I'll be praying. I just need to pray. I like to pray just hiking. <laughs> I like to pray doing it. Things. But you know, the thing is, is we need to come together and we pray. And I'll, I'll, I'll stop on that one. The fourth one, we find that it says that they were, the believers were gathered everything, they had everything in common, selling their possessions and goods, and they gave to anyone who had a need. Every day, they continued to meet together in the temple, or in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. And, you know, we could go on and look at even a, some more things, but miracles were an important aspect of the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit among believers and occurred most often in their mission to unbelievers. You know what? It's important that we come and pray together. It's important that we study the Word together. But guess what? We're all that is preparing us to take it out. Right? And as we go and we pray with unbelievers and we share Christ with unbelievers, you know, we do it together. And because of their relationship with each other, they were able to do it. Making disciples in verse 47... And the Lord added to their number daily those who were, have, who were being saved. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that neat? They were being added daily. You know, as a church together, as we pray together, we come in and we have our time together. We study the Word together. Guess what? We can go out together. Amen? And you know... You have neighbors. You have family. And you know, your pastor can't reach all of them. But you can reach those that are close to you. And you know, I believe that every single one of us 
need to be praying. Lord, who can I reach? Lord, where can I go? How many know that the Lord will tell you? Right? You will know, oh, I need to go see so-and-so. And you know, the thing is, is every, we pray with each other, and as we go out, that's our mission field. And you know, we need to go out with that. We need to know that every morning. Every morning as we seek God and we pray, what do I can pray for? I can pray, Lord, where do you want me today? Who can I go see today? You know, it's so neat when the Lord does that, just lays people on your heart. Amen? And then you go. It's not that you have to go preach to them. But just in our time of sharing, sometimes it opens up to where you can pray with them or testify to them or give you give an example. Amen? Right? Okay. Hmm. It's 12.06. 12, <laughs> okay, should we stand together? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> what are the three words that we need to have in our heart? See? See? Devote, devotion. And I could give you quite a few more verses, but you know, if you went back to uh, Chronicles and you saw when David put all the stuff together to build the temple, and he wasn't going to be able to build it, and Solomon was going to build it, you know what it says? Solomon devoted his life to build that temple. He would have never got it done had he not devoted himself. And there's a lot of different verses, okay? <laughs> Lord, we thank you for, for our time together this morning. And Lord, I just thank you for your word and, and for each other. And that, Lord, we just want to thank you that we can just come together here in your presence, in your house. And Lord, we can share together. We can pray together. We can study your word together that we might grow. And Lord, I pray that as we go out these doors, Lord, help us to know how and where to allow you to guide us, Lord. Father, we want to be your children, and we want your will done in our lives. So this morning, Father, we're praying. Oh God, we're praying for our country, we're praying for our families, we're praying for our community. And Lord, we bring our those prayers to you. And Lord, as we go out, Father, we want Lord Jesus to identify with you. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.